I'm not really off to a great start. First of all, I wasn't recording. Got my lure wrapped around an electric fence that I didn't see. Shocked myself. And these first few stretches of water here looked really good, but haven't had a hit. Oh, there's a fish up there. I don't know if the camera picked it up, but he just rose. Hit something off the top. So at this point here, my GoPro started to condensate with a bit of the warm morning sun hitting it on the lens, uh, which is really frustrating because you don't know at the time until it's too late. And I did catch a fish here, so I'll play this bit of film anyway, and um, it gets better after this. I don't know, what have I got here? Snagged himself a bit of rock. Oh, got him. Finally. Yo, oh, that took way longer than I would have expected this morning. Nice little brown. Now I have forgotten my pliers, which is a rookie mistake. So let's see how we go getting him out of here. Hopefully my GoPro doesn't condensate in the lens again because that really shits me. Always does it at the worst time, you don't realise. Just landed one nice little brown trout out of this pool, so I'm not expecting to get another one, but it's always worth a quick cast. Oh, so I just landed my first fish of the morning and things just aren't going that well. First, I forgot my pliers. Uh, then, about yeah, a couple casts in, there was an electric wire running across the creek. I didn't see. Lure snagged on it. Electrocuted myself getting it off. Um, yeah, just and then um, and classic GoPro just playing up. Always tends to um, to fog up in the lens when it gets a bit of sun on it in the morning. And yeah, landed that first fish. And of course, GoPro was all fogged up, so can't really see anything. But Anyway, it's going to be an awesome day weather-wise, so we'll just keep pressing on and hopefully things get a bit better from here on in. But right, spewing off the bubble fly because it makes releasing fish heaps harder. Anyway, let's see how we go. The pools like this that you think would have to have a fish in them, you never usually catch any of them. And these little tiny shallow pools always have fish in them. Although, maybe he is just sitting up a bit higher in the pool. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Oh my god. Oh! <laughs> Seriously, dude, take it. He's on it. This is crazy.
God, it's so sick of these um, murky conditions. It's spring here in um, Gippsland, so we've been getting a lot of rain. So obviously you can see we've had um, floods and whatnot, so the water's still pretty dirty. But if the water was crystal clear, that's crazy. That trout was just following that lure for ages. And from just back there where I was sitting, I couldn't quite see this little um, entry to the pool. And so, yeah, that's where he was sitting up in there and followed it out. Unfortunately, he didn't quite want it. But that was so cool. Don't think he struck the lure though, so he could still be around. Oh yes, go on. I wasn't even watching. I was trying to watch where I was putting my foot. Because I was about to um, go ass up. Got him. Hopefully me GoPro lens hasn't fogged up this top. We're done here. We're doing the death roll. Solid fish too. Oh, he got himself off. That's the best scenario that could have ever happened there. Oh, so it's turning out to be not a bad sort of a morning. Um, this is actually the first day that I've ever carried a net trout fishing. Um, just bought this cheap rubber net off eBay. And it's actually made life like really easy as far as landing fish and releasing them but yeah forgot me flies today so that would have really helped uh, but yeah, it was like 20 bucks off ebay so can't really go wrong it seems to be working quite well uh, using these using the wild bait minnows which does have the trebles on it so generally that would be a fair nightmare in a net but it's been super easy to get out of the rubber so far um, and yeah, once again, the wild bait minnow has been proven its worth. Second trip out with them, so pretty happy still. And I've thrown this one at a lot of rocks, trees, snags. It's been getting banged up pretty hard and it's still in like really good shape. So the quality is obviously there. Um, the fish like them, so I'm just, yeah, I'm just real happy with them. And it's good to be able to buy them off. Um, like a small business instead of just going to BCF or something like that. And, you know, so we've only got a few hours this morning, so yeah, we'll um, keep moving on, see if we can find a few more. Got him right there! You wouldn't believe that! <laughs> what are the chances of that? Nice, another little brownie.
Hey, go. So I decided to cut this next bit of footage out just for this guy's privacy. Um, and the conversation actually went on for ages, so a lot of it was just me chatting to him in the end. But yeah, to start with, he came along and said, you're on private property and you can't be here. And my first reaction was, well, you can't own the creek, mate. Um, which he then went on to explain that there was no river frontage on that particular creek, because uh, it is a small creek that runs into the main one. So at that point I thought, well, I can either keep arguing with him or just, you know, try and be nice, respectful, and essentially try and talk my way out of it, which is what I did. And he came around pretty quick then once I explained I was only catch and release fishing. Um, I live locally just down the road and, you know, he sort of ended up, he knew some of the, like my grandparents and stuff like that. So yeah, he was quite happy for me to keep fishing in the end. There's, and there's usually a reason why people like that don't want someone else there fishing or, or on their land. Um, and it's because someone else has done the wrong thing in the past. And that was the case for this bloke. He'd had people there, um, catching all the fish, cooking up barbecues, had dogs running around and just really not being respectful. Um, and obviously when he went to approach them, they weren't very nice. So yeah, that's initially why he wasn't happy with me being there. But once I had to talk to him and it just showed me a bit of respect, really, he was, um, yeah, he was happy for me to keep fishing. Yeah, and then that particular creek is a small creek that runs into the main one. So I'm still not 100% sure whether what he was saying is correct as far as the creek being private property. I don't, it's a named creek, it runs all year round. So I'm not entirely sure. I did a bit of Googling, but it's still not 100% clear to me. But anyway, he's, um, yeah, he's happy for you to come back now after I've had a talk to him. So, but it'd be nice to know for sure the rules. Um, yeah, so if anyone knows a bit more about the, the rules and the guidelines around creeks and, and being on private property and stuff like that, let me know for sure, but uh, anyway, showing him a bit of respect and being nice definitely went a long way.